the second question kind of goes into um, some of those reasons why um, Native Indigenous women might be targeted, but also um, I think that what is uh, consistently reported about missing and murdered Indigenous people is, is the aftermath that they are missing. You see a lot of those posters with pictures and information about, you know, their height and things like that. But looking about, looking kind of on more of a prevention, what are some measures that maybe we could, um, you know, enforce or encourage to help pre prevent some of these, um, some of these, um, these occurrences, these uh, missing and murdered indigenous people. Um, I know that um, if there's anything that you wanna shed light on in terms of what are some of the current issues um, that might be contributing to the problem of the missing and murdered indigenous women. So um, thinking about contributing factors and also thinking about prevention measures. Um, Deborah, do you wanna start? Sure, yeah. Well, I mean, if we look at the, the spectrum of violence, we look at, you know, the taking it back to colonialization, you look at taking it back to the genocidal practices of, you know, the boarding school taking of land, um, you know, discrimination, if you're a Native American, I mean, the goal was kill the Indian to save the man. So, you know, the stripping of language. So, um, we have uh, seen some some incredibly dark a dark history here in the United States, but most of our people, most of the the citizens of the U.S. will not know of these atrocities because it's not taught in the schools. Yep. And you know, in in uh, you know, growing up here too, if if my parents didn't teach me, uh, you know, who I about who I was and that I carry good medicine. I, I may have believed what the teachers taught us that works in some instances that were extinct. And then in, in many, we don't exist unless you are in seventh grade and they're eighth grade in the Pacific Northwest history, you have a week on, on the natives that, that were here. So mm -hmm. they still refer to us as, as long gone. And yeah. It's a, it's a past tense, if at all. So, you know, we talk about how can you support, well, learn, learn true history through indigenous eyes, learn about who, you know, who your neighbors are. There's, there's 27 federally recognized tribes in the state of Washington right. and, you know, learn, learn, um, you know, meet, meet up with someone. What I've been seeing from our allies is I've had folks call me and say, you, would you mind having coffee with me? And. And I'm like, okay, um, and let's start talking. And they, they, you know, and these are some state representatives and folks who are making policy saying, I want to truly honor you or in, in your community. And so what do I need to do? And so it, it can't, it can't just be one person because each tribal right. nation has citizens and, you know, in, in our tribal nations, we're citizens to our sovereign governments. So each one of us has a vision and a view that we would like to see. You know, many of us uh, agree to, we want our languages back. We, we want, um, yeah, we want our land back. We want things that were stolen from us to be returned, including our regalia, our bones, um, including, you know, so much of our identity was taken and, and we were told in schools by teachers, still told, I, I worked in the school district, still told that, uh, you know, th those negative words that, well, you're not as smart as others and we don't need to, uh, you know, uh, we don't need to educate you. You have your own ways and we'll just put you in the corner. And so that that's, it's wrong on so many levels. And so as we look at all of those systems that are set up, the school system, the government systems, we, we truly need allies. And, and I think it's the time for healing. We've seen COVID shut us down in right. so many different oh. ways. Yes. And I hope that people are reflecting about their own lives and how we can work together as human beings to uplift other people. And I hope that as we look at racial justice, as we look at, 
you know, educating our own babies that we are not so hurtful as to say another child is less important than my own child. And so we have to recognize that when we see an indigenous woman, um, and, and when I was younger in Seattle, I seen a lot of Alaska native women and I'd say, dad, what, you know, look, the, the women look a little different than us here. And he'd say, yeah, they're from Alaska. They're Alaska native. And I said, and I could see that alcoholism and, and the head, the, a lot on the street. And it, it wasn't just Alaska native, but it was a lot of indigenous women. And right. I thought, dad, why are that beautiful woman looks like auntie? Why is she on the streets? She looks beat up. And it just hurt me. It hurt me so bad that I want to do something every damn day. I want to wake up and, and be on panels like this and, you know, and to- work across the nation because we are important. Yes. We are important. Our lives really matter. And I'm tired of being put down or let down because others don't understand. They've been blocked blocked off away from us and, and told that, you know, we're, you know, don't, don't walk towards them or don't educate or don't, uh, you know, don't listen. But I think we're better than that. I think it's time that we reach out and, you know, I I just lost a a loved one a little over a month ago. And, you know, my neighbor who lives here in Tulalip, she's non non non-Indian brought some food for my, my family. And, and that's very deeply in our culture, but to have a, a, a neighbor come and bring a whole meal for us and send some love really shows that connection. So I think we have to cross some of those boundaries, not to take, but to give back. 